Lauren Ritchie from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Bear, and today I'm with Anthony Coleridge, the director of The Curse of Elizabeth Faulkner. How are you today? Oh, very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So, how's the show been going? Uh, really, really well. Yeah, we, we didn't really know what to expect because it's quite early to have a sort of horror comedy thing, um, sort of just around lunchtime. But uh, yeah, we've had four sold out performances just come off the back of that. So we had our day off yesterday as well, which I think we're all very grateful for. Did you just sleep all day? Pretty much, yeah. Sort of two weeks of drinking do catch up with you. But um, yeah, no, it's all going really well. Everyone's in good spirits. And you've been getting five star reviews, which is amazing. Yeah, we've had a few. We had BBC Radio 4. Um, they gave us a five star. We had uh, Broadway Baby as well. That was amazing, that review. And that's I think that's made a big difference to, to people sort of wanting to come and see it. Uh, so yeah, we've had three, three five stars in total so far and fingers crossed we've had like five reviewers in on Sunday. So we're just sort of waiting very nervously, hoping that they liked it. So tell us about the show. Uh, so it's basically written by Tim Downey, who was one of the guys from Peep Show. Uh, he was in the King's Speech and he's, does, he's a very, very successful actor. And it's basically a very British, very silly, dark comedy uh, basically, it's a farce really and it's about an undertaker who has lost his entire business he basically doesn't know what he's doing and one day completely out of nowhere this bloke turns up um, just as the undertaker's basically been taken over by debt collectors and stuff so he's at his lowest place this bloke turns up and basically explains this ridiculous story that um, his family have been cursed everyone in the family dies age 33 in very weird and wonderful ways and then it's about those two making this journey across rural England to lift the curse of Elizabeth Faulkner. So why did you decide to direct the project? What appeal, what was so appealing about it? Um, I have been working as a theatre director for about eight years and I don't really like theatre. I'm not really interested in theatre. Um, I don't like the sort of pomp and the sort of reverence that everyone has. So my rehearsal room is just a bunch of people who like to have a beer together, having fun and just enjoying the the writing and the script for what it is there's there's nothing pretentious about it it's just a bunch of friends putting together something fun and every part of the process and every part of the casting and, and the way that we've done it has just been about kind of allowing Tim to have the show that he wrote but in the most kind of informal fun way because if if the cast aren't enjoying it then the audience aren't going to enjoy it and yeah I, I don't direct anything except comedy that's the only thing I'm interested in doing I think there's plenty of stuff to make you think and to make you cry and all of that stuff, just turn on the news. I think these days I would rather make people happy and I'd rather make people laugh than anything else. And um, I think Tim's writing, I've known Tim for years and that's, that's what attracted me to doing it. I just thought it was really good fun. And as soon as I read it, I knew exactly who I should put in it. And yeah, just, just to make some people laugh really. Would you say that horror comedy is quite rare in theatre right, right now? Like, would you say? Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's, it's pretty niche. I've not seen, I think there's one other show at the Fringe this year that's been listed under those two categories. I've not come across much of it. I think in the West End in the last couple of years, we've had some big successful horror shows. So we've had, um, I mean, Ghost Stories was probably the biggest success that they've had. But it felt like the right time to do this one because of One Man, Two Governors and Noises Off, 39 Steps, like loads of big farces. It felt like the right time to do a farce. I think people wanted to see it. And also with things like League of Gentlemen and, and stuff like that, the British audience is like silly and they like dark and we've, you know, some abstract stuff is, there, is, is in there as well to keep people going. But yeah, I don't think, it's, it's quite nice to know that we don't have a massive amount of direct competition, I suppose. So are you planning to come to the Fringe again? Yeah, um, I do stand up comedy. So I've been doing that for the last few years up here. And then um, we heard very recently, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I will. Um, we, we've just heard that basically the writer's written two sequels to this. Um, yeah, so at the end they all have to go to Peru. The, there is a sequel to that in Peru and then there's a sequel to that, there's a trilogy where basically they return from Peru and something massive and huge and disastrous comes up that they've got to deal with. So we are going to be back at the Edinburgh Festival 2014 with the sequel to The Curse of Elizabeth Faulkner. So. Well, I'm really looking forward to that because cool. I just saw the show and I have to say it was hilarious. Okay. I really loved it. So you can catch The Curse of Elizabeth Faulkner at Just the Tonic at the Caves and it's on till, is it the, right up to the 26th? Yeah, we're done. Uh, we, we finish on the 25th. So 25th on the 25th. Thank you very much. This has been Waffle TV.